whole time, and you guys can kind of jump in and, and join in. So today we wanted to talk about just a general overview of the faculty portal, uh, a little bit of the background. We'll do a quick demo which shows kind of the slides. It gives you an idea of what the look and feel is, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's next. And as I mentioned, we'll, uh, we'll do questions throughout the whole time. Uh, but first of all, let me ask you guys, if I ask you what's a portal, do you guys know? Raise your hand if you are familiar with what a portal is. No hands, one hand up. So, so a portal is essentially a way to be able to view a bunch of information in a single place. So the idea is that you, for the faculty, what we're thinking about, it's like a one-stop shop. So faculty look at a bunch of different things. They look at their grant information, they look at teaching information. And so what we wanted to do was put all of that in one easy to get to website for portal. So that's kind of the idea behind what the portal is. Um, it was also what we wanted to do was make this foundational. So the idea is that we built this portal out the phase one, we got as much functionality as we could, but the intention is over the next year or two, we'll continue to grow. We'll continue to add functionality. Uh, we continue to meet with faculty and say, what's working for you, what's not. And so we're constantly changing this. Uh, the way we came to decide that we wanted to use PeopleSoft Fluid for the portal was several years ago, we did an analysis of what portals are available out there. And after some detailed analysis, we came to say, well, PeopleSoft actually has a fairly good portal. Uh, it's embedded with the other PeopleSoft tools. It kind of makes sense to use it. So we went forward with uh, using PeopleSoft Fluid. And then we have worked closely with FITAC. Now, if you're not familiar with FITAC, that's the Faculty uh, IT Advisory Council. They've got about seven or eight faculty that are really focused on IT. They're represented across the, across the university. And they worked very closely with us throughout this whole process to make sure we came up with the right ideas, the right requirements. So today, we've got more than 5,000 users out there. So all the faculty are currently up and running with the faculty portal. And then there's uh, postdocs and other type of faculty, if you will, are also using it. So we've implemented it to more than 5,000 people. Um, just to talk a, a little bit about the history of the faculty portal. So this, the concept actually started back in 2014, 2015 with the Office of Sponsored Research. And they said, we need something to get out there for the faculty. So they actually started to go through the process. They did a requirements definition. They pulled a bunch of faculty together. And then certain things got in the way, so they had to, to stop the project. And then for the next several years, we had several stops and starts to the project. And then finally, in February of 2017, we were allocated funding and ready to move forward. So we actually brought in Cyber, uh, who's a consulting firm, and Sharon Boquin, who I mentioned before, is the technical lead on this project, and her team's done a great job to really create the portal for us. Uh, we spent most of 2017 working on the product itself, itself building it out, doing a bunch of testing. Uh, and then we did a soft launch in November of 2017. And by soft launch, I mean we had three or four faculty using the product, actually up and running with it, giving us feedback. And then we took several months because we wanted to make sure we got all the bugs out of it. And then we started the full rollout. So the faculty portal actually has been rolling out throughout 2018. We've been doing it in phases. We started with the School of Medicine, College of Arts and Sciences, kind of all the big groups, implemented it to them, let it get up and running for a couple months in each group, got feedback, made changes, and kept pushing it along. And then finally, in just actually a month or two ago, we implemented it to the remaining faculty. So again, all faculty up and running. So kind of the goals and objectives, I, I touched on this a little bit, but really one-stop shop is what we're trying to achieve. That's kind of the primary thing. And what we're trying to do is we want faculty teaching and we want faculty doing research. And so whatever we can do to minimize the work they have to do external to that, the better off we are. So if we can make it easier for them, we reduce the number of clicks. That's what we're trying to drive to for faculty efficiency. Uh, on the technical side, we, you know, we decided to go with the PeopleSoft solution. One of the key issues we had was to keep performance in mind because we knew if they started to call up the portal, it took a certain amount of time, they were going to be done and they were never going back again. So when we were testing it out, it actually initially it took 45 or 50 seconds for the portal to call up. And can you guys imagine sitting there waiting for a website to come up for 50 seconds? I mean, you'd be gone and done with it. And then Sharon's team did a great job and actually got it down to about 10 or 12 seconds, which is what it is now. And that's comparable to what the existing portal is. So 
I think we got that pretty well in control. Uh, so originally, just to kind of talk through how we went about collecting requirements and who we met with, the first group back in 2014, 2015, met with a number of faculty to kind of start building out these requirements. So we picked up on the work they had done, and then we went out across campus and talked to a number of other faculty because we were really looking for a kind of broad input from a variety of different types of faculty users. So we had a number of meetings with the various faculty across campus. We went in and did some prototyping. We reviewed it with the faculty. We made sure that it was kind of heading in the direction they wanted it to be. So the main point here is we had significant input from faculty as we've gone through this process. So that kind of got us to what are the requirements. So this is really the high level set of the important requirements just to kind of run through. The first one there, and you guys may have heard this across campus, but display current and accurate grant information. So one of the big issues we had over the years is that the faculty would look at their grant information through InfoPort or through other tools, and they were not confident that the grant information was correct. So they basically said, don't put this in the portal if the, if the data is not accurate. So there was a significant amount of effort in place within InfoPort and other within PeopleSoft to get that grant information as accurate as possible. You know, there's only so accurate you can get grant information, you have projection information, you have other costs coming in, so it's hard to make it as current and as accurate as possible. But we feel like we've mostly achieved that goal. Uh, the second piece was they wanted to be able to see transactions. They wanted to see a list of all the detailed transactions that they have executed through e-procurement or with other tools. So we looked at that and said, well, right now, you know, that would be pretty burdensome to do. So we decided to table that, but essentially they can go into some of the other tools like PeopleSoft, Query, and InfoPort and get the transaction information. We also needed to provide a way for administrators to, administrators to upload documents. The idea behind this is that given that the grant information through InfoPort may not be as current as a faculty member needs it to be, they needed a way for their administrator to upload, let's say, a spreadsheet that shows what their current grant information is. So we gave them that capability. We actually kind of try and dissuade them not to use that because we really want them using the native tools. But in case they need it, they have the capability of uploading the spreadsheet. Uh, interestingly enough, they want to display their current, their own current salary. They want to be what, see what their current salary is and all the different funding sources they're paid off of. Because unlike us, we mostly paid off of one fund source. They're paid off 10 to 15 different fund sources. Uh, they wanted a common inbox. So the idea behind this is that they have multiple applications like Ramsey's, like Conflict of Interest, even some of the PeopleSoft applications. They're getting emails all the time coming in. They wanted one central place where they could go to and see how many, how many activities do I have that I need to react to, be able to click on that and then take them directly into that system. So it's really kind of a convenience way. We also kept it so they can't actually access the emails that are coming through too, so they kind of have two avenues to get to. Provide a repository of links. Uh, they wanted the ability to upload various documents. So one of the things is they want to be able to put their CV and have their CV in an easy to get to place. So they know it's going to always be on the portal if they upload it there. Wherever they are, they can go out there and get to their CV. Uh, we originally, we talked about instructor grading patterns, which is a, it's, it's a reporting tool that lets them know how the, what the grading patterns are across all faculty and for all classes. That one was tabled. I think that our registrar was hesitant to put that out there. Uh, they want to be able to just see a display of their incompletes. So for any students they have in any of their classes that are that have an incomplete, they have a summary list showing them who those incompletes are. So again, they can react to them. And then they wanted to have a, a cleaner and easier way of getting into the student portion of PeopleSoft and see class roster, grades, um, and then we gave them access to that in a quick and easy way. So with that, any, any questions, I'll just pause for a minute. Just to kind of now I'll walk you through the demo. So first of all, just to kind of show you the old, I think Sharon refers to this lovingly as the old and ugly. So there you go. Not necessarily the public then. Okay. <laughs> so talk, take that off the recording. Um, so this is what the faculty portal looks like. So essentially what we try to do 
is make it so the center kind of draws their eye. So this is the main thing they want to see. So if you look at the top portion here, this is the financial section. So this shows them their grant. So this person actually has two grants. And just right in front of them, they can see what the total expenditures are and what the balance is. So real quick, they know exactly where they stand with their grants. Uh, down here, they have their, their teaching section. So the first section on the teaching section is this faculty center. And this shows their various classes. So it shows for the different sessions. It'll show up to three sessions at a time. And then it shows all the classes they have. So it shows kind of the relevant information right here on the, on the face of the portal. But you can see there's a hyperlink. So they can actually hit the hyperlink and then dig deeper in. Uh, down here, this is their salary section. So we're not going to show the salary sources, but essentially this would be down here. You might see this scroll for 15, 20 different sources. And then this personal faculty documents, this is where they can actually go out, upload their document and store it. And they can store multiple documents. On the right hand side, this is the inbox. And so for their research applications like Ramsey's conflict of interest, those show up under this research tab. And then if they have any activity in their inbox for HR finance, those would show up here. Uh, help and support, pretty straightforward. And then we do have the capability of showing reports out here. So if there's queries that are developed that are useful across the university, we can actually go out and, and tag them to the faculty portal. On the left side, this is the link farm. You all are probably familiar with most of this from your own portal. Uh, we actually specifically for the faculty added teaching resources and research resources. You'll see that in a little more detail. And then we have a My Links. So this is the capability for them to actually enter their own links and store it out here on the portal. Uh, in this section, we just want to show them the status of the different, different applications. And then down here, we have a notification section that is capable of notifying at the highest level. So for example, if the registrar wants to say grades are now open, we can, we can have that, but we also allow it to go down to more detail level. So if the school specifically wants to put a notification out there, they can do that. And then even down to a department level. So it gives the capability of those departments controlling the information coming and going to the faculty. Okay. So if they wanted to dig deeper into their grants, they just want to see a little broader view. They click on that. And then this takes them to more detail on that, on those particular grants. So it actually shows them the key things th they want to see, like are what's their, their budget, and then what's their balance. So this shows them that kind of detail and where their expenditures are and how much their expenditures are. And let's say they want to then dig deeper. If they, they can then click and go, this takes them deep into InfoPort now. So now they kind of, they're still in the faculty portal, still running the portal. But this is also launched in another window that takes them into InfoPort. So now they can kind of peruse through that particular grant and see, you know, what their, what their line items are for the expenditures in that grant and the revenue. So then if we come back out and we focus on the teaching section, uh, let's say if they click on one of the one of the classes, that just takes them into deeper into Connect Carolina and shows them the grades, their roster. And so again, you know, rather than having to kind of traverse through with multiple clicks, it's right up there, right in front of them. So then we'll keep on going down and then we have no examples of this, but under the pending incomplete, they would see a list of all the different students they have that are pending. So, you know, it could be half a dozen students but for whatever class, they'll see them all there. And then down here under the documents, this is where it's fairly easy to upload these documents and store them out here. So here's an example. We, uh, we did a survey across campus and we asked many faculty, tell us the top 10 links that you guys would want to get to from a teaching standpoint. And so this was essentially the highlight of the list they gave us. We said, what are the top 10 you want from a research standpoint? And so we added those to the research section too. And then this is the one I like. So you can actually add, this is very simple to go out and add your own links. You can see my primary link is ESPN. So added that one out there. But since then, I really use, I'm actually set up for the faculty portal having to test it out. But I actually have gone out and added a number of links. So it's 
really convenient to know exactly where to go and what you've got out there. So now if we want to look a little deeper into the, the research piece, so if they just click on research, this automatically gives them a link into the proposal certification. And then if they, and if there were multiple, they would see multiple of these type of links here. And then if they click on that link, that takes them deep into Ramsey's. So again, rather than having to call up Ramsey's on a whole different URL or conflict of interest or any of the other applications, they're now deep into Ramsey's. They just, all they have to do is approve this and they approve it and move on. And then that eliminates that as a, from their inbox. Go back to slideshow and make it to that. That's right up here. So if, if we come back here, they've got the research link right there. And that shows them they've got, this doesn't necessarily match up, but it shows them they actually have two items in the research link. And so then they just clicked on that research link and it expands it and shows them under Ramsey's they've got this item they need to address. Yep. And then that's actually, that's the demo. That's what there is to the faculty portal. Any thoughts or questions on any of that? So I, I mentioned before I'm an art and I'm relatively new, so I've gathered that there's nothing that I have to request for faculty to access this. That just That's exactly right. So we, we went through and got all faculty implemented, and as new faculty come in, they're <laughs> automatically given the faculty portal. Okay. Um, so what if I have a faculty member that has a start date, but they come in What, what is the answer to the question of what it takes or what, what actually happens administratively that unlocks success? So really just getting set up in Connect Carolina, once they've done with that, they should automatically have the faculty portal. And Sharon, you, anyone? Your, your faculty affiliation. Okay. So your staff affiliation in LMAP, your faculty affiliation automatically. That will come over as soon as they log in, and it will create it, and it defaults to it. And that's really all dependent on the form of my data job. What are the links that you had in your teaching resources and slavery on the graduate capital, correct? All right. What was that? One of the one of them was mislabeled? Uh yes. I just wanted to know what the process would be for getting that change. Like it's not actually the undergraduate catalog anymore. And we'll can, can you take a note of that? We'll look at that. I suspect this is a fairly old slide right here. So it's probably correct, but we'll take a look at it and make sure it is. No, that's great. Thank you. So the list is the exact same so it, as in our version of Connect Carolina. So if you log into Connect Carolina and go to teaching resources, you should be able to see exactly what is there. All of the teaching resource links are public. So, um, and if that's wrong, I give you my card and you can get changed. In and generally, a help ticket would take care of that too. That'd be the easiest way to go. I'll give you Sharon's cell phone. You could call her at night if you want. If I use the um, Connect Carolina link, does it automatically go to the dashboard uh, to find the monthly reports? And you mentioned being able to upload spreadsheets. But I do send them the details of the non-personnel. Sure. So that's, that's not there. Right. So I included that, but yep. you know, saying that to their monthly, wonder if there's a way to upload. Here's they can go back and what did you know? What did I send them six months ago? They don't have right. to go back six months and email. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> go here and, or if I can upload their reports here and they send me an email. Your report is now available. Right. Yeah. And really. Yes. So what you again? I think this is a help ticket, and just say you want request. Request access to upload documents to the faculty portal as an administrator. And what will happen is you'll be granted access, you'll be able to log in, and then you'll upload a document, and it'll show up in this grants tab right here. So when so they. Right now I have access to the yeah, the original access, I guess. Right. So this is the second access to upload documents. It's a second level of access, yeah. And so just a request ticket. And. So, and really just say that, that you need access to the faculty portal to be able to upload documents. And who your faculty member is, because that'll, what we need to do is to do. 
the other thing I'll mention is uh, I you know, kind of found out when you grow up being on the several faculty companies and how do I get to e now? <laughs> you know? And it's not really intuitive to go to enterprise reporting. It's not really intuitive for you know, self service or finance, you know, right there. Yeah. I kind of have to dig for you from. We have had a few comments like that, so I will admit, and that's the type, that's really great input. In fact, we met with the FITAC last week and said, what are you guys hearing out there? What, what's uncomfortable? What's difficult? So we're constantly trying to, you know, update it so it actually works more effectively. So real, for many of you all, if you have any suggestions, please, you can email me at scott underscore jackson dot unc dot edu, and I'm happy to pass it forward and get it taken care of. Other is is there um, for new faculty faculty orientation for people exposed to this, or is there a website that I can link to with information that kind of provides an overview for key folks? Um, so they're not, as far as their orientation goes, I doubt they're specifically trained on the faculty portal. Within this help and support, there's some actually pretty good documentation that shows them and describes each one of these sections. So I would suggest you just have them look at that link, and it's, I mean, it's 10 minutes, so it's, it's pretty quick and easy to look at. So just kind of where we're going next, uh, essentially, we've kind of had on the uh, horizon to look at Sakai and to integrate this deeper with Sakai. So that's one of the feedback we've gotten a lot from faculty is, you know, they really want to tighten it up with Sakai. So we're moving forward with that process. You know, we're looking at how we can look at the syllabus and the grade books and all that kind of stuff. So the same kind of concept where there's a link on there where their classes are, that link would actually expand and it would say, if you want to go to, you know, Sakai slash grade books, you could do that, for example. So again, this takes them away from having to go to Sakai itself and it lets them link deeper into the system. And for you all, at some point in time, we are going to be utilizing a similar look and feel and going to be expanding the, uh, the, your current portal to have more of this fluid look and feel technology. And some of the pages deeper into Connect Carolina will also be somewhat modified to have more of this fluid type of feel. So this is kind of the direction we're, we're going uh, and the faculty were the first to get there. All right. What other questions have you guys got? Thoughts or? Very good. One to five minutes, not bad. All right, thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think that's all I have.